What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Yee Yee Podcast, episode 33? 33. 33. Double three. How you doing today? Great. Uh, why don't you tell the listeners how they can win this beautiful Christmas sweater that we just got in? In my hands, I'm holding a sweater knitted by maybe your grandma, very <laughs> country grandma. It is definitely the best Christmas sweater we've ever done. It's not just a blank sweater with a uh, screen printed logo. It is like hand knit, probably not hand knit, but it is amazing. It's camo. It's got these bucks, bass on them. We're going to give it away today. Uh, these are going to be releasing sometime in November, I would imagine, maybe a little before Black Friday, maybe around Black Friday. I don't want to give an exact date because I'm not sure exactly when, but we're going to give this one away for sure. Uh, for a chance to win this, comment below your favorite Christmas song. Ooh, that's a good one. How's that? That's a really good one. Okay, so comment your favorite Christmas song. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on uh, Apple or Spotify, go check out the YouTube. Drop a quick comment. Make sure you're subscribed. And we're going to give this Christmas sweater away early. Yeah, give us a review on Apple Podcasts if you listen on there. You said that that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Uh, I mean, that's the first thing I look at whenever I'm looking at a podcast to see how um, how many viewers it has, just to kind of see how uh, how people like it. That's really the only way you can tell to see if people are listening to it and enjoying it. So um, it helps us gain new listeners so we can grow it and um, keep bringing on cool cool guests. Yeah. Uh, we, speaking of which, we got a really fun guest today, uh, Ginger Billy. A lot of people have been asking for us to have him on. We finally got him on. It was a hilarious conversation don't you think Ron's just over there <laughs> we you're all, all gonna say anything I don't think there is not a time where you're just like smiling when you're talking to that guy he's wearing the exact same thing from the last time that I saw him which is his backwards uh Dale Earnhardt <laughs> senior oh, cap teach, yeah. and no shirt the first question I asked him was, do you own shirts? And he said the only thing he really wears is Yee Yee. So that's a really fun interview. Make sure you stick around. Uh, we're going to start getting some more guests. So comment below and let us know any guests that you want to see. Um, we've already got some lined up for the next couple of weeks that I'm really excited about. We've got some huge guests actually coming that is really exciting for the podcast. So um, Granger's got a lot of shows coming up. I know that there's been a... Um, a little bit of worry because some dates have been canceled and everything. So this is the most up-to-date list, and there is no anticipation of these dates changing at all. This is probably how it's looking for the rest of the year. So I'm going to read them off. You can get your tickets at grangersmith.com. Just go there. You can get your tickets. You can get the VIP package, which includes um, a couple different things, but the main thing is the meet and greet. And do not sleep on those meet and greets. They sell out. Uh, Billy Bob's in Fort Worth already sold out. And it's, it's crazy. Like, I think 25% of all people that bought tickets to the show are buying meet and greets. So these do sell out pretty quickly. So if you want to meet Granger, um, make sure you go ahead and go to grangersmith.com and get these VIP packages. Um, November 5th, Grizzly Rose. November 6th, Grizzly Rose. Both of those are in Denver. There's two nights. I believe that this morning... We're recording this uh, a day before this podcast drops. I believe that the November 5th date sold out. November 6th is not far behind, so make sure you go get your tickets for that show. November 7th, Salt Lake City, The Depot. November 10th, Spokane, Washington, Knitting Factory. November 12th, Boise, Idaho, Knitting Factory. November 16th, Chico, California, Senator Theater. November 18th, Sacramento, California, Ace of Spades. November 19th, San Diego, California, House of Blues. November 20th, Las Vegas, Nevada, Stonies. November 21st, Bakersfield, California, Fox Theater. November 26th, Buda, Texas, Buck's Backyard. November 27th, Fort Worth, Texas, Billy Bob's. And then there's a couple more dates in December that are on there. And then I think there's one more that's about to get announced that's not on the website yet. If you're in the Southeast, you may want to um, stay tuned for that one. But yeah, those are the November dates. Going to be out on the road a lot. I think we're going to be out for... A couple of dates. I just realized, by the way, I asked you if you're not going to talk, and then I realized that you don't have a mic today. So Brian is off camera, and I was asking him why he's not talking. It's because he doesn't have a mic. Um, we're going to be on some of those dates. You're, you're going, right? Aren't you? Uh, we'll be in California for a few of the dates, and then maybe Billy Bob's. Okay. I'm going to be out Boise. I'm going to be out that entire California run plus Boise. So it sucks that um, a lot of people have asked about Seattle and Portland. And that's not really our world. We do the Yee Apparel stuff. I've had a lot of people asking me 
in the Yee Nation Facebook group. Um, unfortunately, those dates are not going to happen anymore, which sucks because all I've ever heard is how amazing Seattle and Portland that those markets are for us. Yeah. Have yeah, you ever been to one of those shows? No, I haven't, but I just know that that's always the biggest meet and greet of the entire year is up in that area. Tyler's calling. What? Okay, I'll take her home in just a minute, Tyler. Okay, well, I'll take him home. <laughs> Behind the scenes of Ye Apparel, my never-ending battle with Tyler. Go ahead and keep that. You don't have to edit that out. All right, well, without further ado, here is the interview with Ginger Billy. Y'all enjoy. All right, we now welcome on very special guest, Ginger Billy. What's up, brother? How you been? I'm good, man. Just got home from, uh, where was we at? Virginia. Just got home from five days of touring. I get to be home today, then we come out to Texas Tuesday. I saw that. I saw you're hitting all the good spots, but you're not hitting us. You're, you're good old friends down in uh, the Austin area, are you? Hey, that's not my fault, man, okay? You blame my agent for that, all right? Not sure. my fault. We came to Austin, I think, uh, maybe about four or five months ago, so I'm sure we'll hit it again soon. Yeah, we were there. It was fun. We, we that was the show that we oh, came out. Yeah, and saw you. Duh, yeah, yeah, duh, yeah. Good times. Good times. You're wearing the same. Appreciate thing y'all from the last time we saw you. It was. You're wearing the same thing from the last time we saw you. Yeah, yeah. I might actually have more <laughs> tattoos now, though. I kind of add to the collection. <laughs> well, that was going to be my first yeah, question. I, that was going to be my first question. Do you own any T-shirts? Uh, I, I, I own some, I have to go into Walmart. I have to wear one. You know, I always keep an emergency shirt in the truck, uh, just in case I need it. So, you know, it's in, just in case, in case it's a nice establishment. Like yeah. 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 Something fancy like Walmart or Dollar Tree or something like that. You know, I feel like everyone around you just like know your face. Cause you just have such a, like a specific look that everyone in your hometown should just know you. And you should be the exception to the rule of the no shirt, no service. But, well, I, I think so, too, and it's funny, man, because people, it's all the time, people walk up to me, especially if I have a shirt, and they're like, man, I almost didn't recognize you, you know, because I'm all, this is this is me, dude, this is what they see all the time on the internet, and then my disguise is wearing a shirt, so it works out pretty good. What's the most fanciest outfit you've ever worn in the last few years since you've blown up as a comedian slash content creator, whatever you want to call yourself? I guess it'd be that romper, man. <laughs> the romper. Dude, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, dude, I've not worn a suit and I couldn't tell you when. I, I've not. I mean, you know, you look in my suitcase when I go on tour, I got like 10 pair of basketball shorts, uh, five or six tank tops. Uh, and, and, you know, that's it. Like, I don't, I don't dress up, man. It's just not what I do. I don't go to any fancy stuff, you know. Yeah, there you go. If you can get away in life with never having to to dress up like that, sounds like you're living a good life. I have a suggestion. You know what you could do? If you ever do have to wear something nice, you could get one of those t-shirts that is just graphic art on it. And it's just a suit. It's just a picture of a suit. Have you ever seen those? You remember one of the girls used to have like yeah. bikini shirts that go down to their, their yeah. ankles? You could do that. But have you ever seen the models who just paint the bikinis and stuff on? Have you ever yeah. seen that? Where it's not a real shirt. They just paint it. Yeah, Sports so Illustrated like, Swimsuit did that. That's it. So, I mean, you know, me being the guy who I am, I don't like wearing shirts. Just paint the bad boy on. We're good to go, man. Something tells me that wouldn't work as well with a male as it would a female. No, I probably would. I, I still like to try it. No, I, I, I'd want to draw it myself, which would be absolutely horrible because I'm not artistic <laughs> at all. So. It'd be bad. Is that a new video idea? I think that might be a new video idea for you. It actually, you, you, you got the old hat wheel uh, turning right now. <laughs> so I want to ask you one thing. What, obviously, we'll get into a little bit of your journey, and, and we've talked a little bit offline about this and, and learned more about you since we've been working together. But would you count yourself as a content creator or would you count yourself as a comedian at this point? Because I know that you've created videos forever and now you're getting into the space where you're touring more so. So what would you say that you are? And think about a listener right now that has no idea who Ginger Billy is and maybe has never seen one of your videos before. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, I started stand up like about a couple months after I started doing the content. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, you know, after my, I think, second viral video of me in the romper, 
I was like, well, you know, if I'm going to do this, I might as well do stand up too. So I got into stand up at the same time as I started doing content. But man, I'm going to tell you, I love touring because I love the, I know Granger's probably the same way. Y'all the same way. You love seeing the people. You love meeting the people that watch your stuff and support you. But I love making content. That is what I like to do because, first of all, I'm a homebody. It kills me to leave my house. I can't, I just, I'm, I'm, very, you know, I just like being here. So if I can go out in the yard and turn a Ford Festiva into something epic, I mean, I would much rather do that, you know, but, but being on the road's part of it, man. I mean, I've, I've built a good set for an hour now and, and, and my shows are doing very well. So it's, you know, I don't know though. I guess I would just consider myself a comedian, whichever way you want to look at that, you know, content creator or stand up, or maybe both, maybe a mixture, you know, was there a specific video towards the beginning of when you started doing all this that went viral and you were like, I think I'm onto something? Like, does a certain video come to mind that went viral? Yeah. Dude, the romper, I, I didn't realize how big it was. Like, I had no, man, it was, I mean, honestly, with all the places that stole it, you know, plus the views on my page, it probably got 50, 60 million views. And after that, I was like, well, you might actually be pretty good at this. You know, so then I, I that's just kind of, you know, I just started making them, man. And now it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, you, you figure things out, you know, and, and as I've gone, I've realized, you know, I just, I don't like to be a one trick pony. I like to build things. I like to, to do medical videos. I like to do whatever I can to spread it out. I don't want to just be one certain crowd. I want everybody to kind of be like, oh, he did this. He did this. So, you know, just i just enjoy it man it's cool to to be able to just create whatever i want to create it's like a big five-year-old dude who wouldn't want to do this as a job you know what i'm saying yeah yeah you keyed on it a little bit too so mm -hmm. i learned whenever we met you the first time that before you dove into doing full-time content creation and and touring and different things like that you worked in the medical field so tell listeners a little bit about that and not only tell them about working in the medical field, but then making that jump. And whenever you kind of figured out like, this is something that I can actually do, I can quit my, my big boy job, you could say. So tell the listeners about that a little bit. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was a restaurant. I'm still licensed. Okay. And I know it's scary. I know it's scary to think that I'd walk into your hospital room when you can't breathe or when you died. All right. But uh, yeah, 13 years, man, I was a respiratory therapist, you know, and uh, I mean, I controlled the life support machines, you know, I, I did all that stuff. And then I, I made that one uh, video about Dale Jr. retiring that kind of started it off, you know, and, and, and I've, I've never, ever one time in my life said, I want to be a comedian. I never, ever said, I want to be a content creator. I just, for whatever reason, got a wild hair at my butt and did that video that day. And then I was like, well, that was cool. You know, it gives you like a little adrenaline rush, man, to see that people are, are commenting and they're liking it and they're laughing about it. So <clears throat> I continued on with that. And then I got into the stand-up and I started hosting uh, for a guy on a pretty big tour uh, and doing just five minutes going all over the place. And about two years in, I'm not making a lot of money. All right. I'm not. I'm not making a lot of money. And Facebook had just monetized uh, videos. My YouTube wasn't big, so I wasn't making any money there. But me, being a man, I was like, I'm going to quit my job. You know, so I called my wife one night. I am about to walk out in front of 4,000 people, okay? And I'm like, I, I just quit my job the day before. I didn't tell her yet. So <laughs> she calls me. I'm like, hey, baby, uh, <clears throat> uh, I just want you to know I, I quit my job, all right? And I could tell she was just not happy, you know, so. I hung up, and before I, I hear my music play, I'm about to walk on stage, and I get a phone call and answer, and she's boohooing, and she's crying. And she's like, why? Why would you do that? We're not even making a lot of money. And I was like, just just trust me. Just trust me. Because now it's sink or swim, dude. You know, because to me, with the respiratory therapy job, I had a crutch. You know, I, I was making enough money where I didn't have to fully dive into the content thing. But I was like, I've got to quit this to make myself want to succeed at that. So I quit the hospital and then I really started grinding and it just kind of went up and up and up and up. And now two, two, two and a half years later, here I am, you know, uh, getting to be, a, you know, a content creator full time. So it's, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, but it is it's scary, dude. Y'all know, 
I'm sure y'all know. I mean, y'all been through the same thing. We all kind of go through that same thing. There's that time where you're like, oh, if I don't make it, you know, I might be working at a strip club in these little shorty shorts, <laughs> you know, to make my income. So I got to make sure I make it. So it was just, it's, you got to grind, man. People don't understand. Like they see these videos, but they don't realize what, what it, it takes. They think you just, eh, you get on a phone and you record, but it's, it's a lot, man. It's stressful. Yeah, there's even like the Earl videos that that sometimes we all as a team will sit down and help write. There's so much that goes into what ends up being sometimes a 30 second, 60 second video. It's funny that you said that about whenever you're quitting your job, because one thing I always noticed about, uh, you know, the, the TV show Shark Tank. Yes. Like all the entrepreneurs, every single time any person has ever gone on there. And they ask them, well, are you doing this full time? And they say, no, they've still got a backup job or like a, you know, a full time job that they're doing. They never invest because they don't want someone, they don't want to invest in a person that hasn't gone all the way in and just dove into the, the deep end of the pool and said, you know what, I'm going to do this. And, and this is the plan. So it's, yeah. it's funny how you relate it to, to content creation as well. Yeah. Dude, I mean, if you, if you don't believe in yourself, then why would they fully believe in you? You know what I'm saying? So but yeah, I mean, it, it's worked out, you know, and it, it kind of feels good to be able to look at my wife and be like, uh-huh, see there, I told you, I told you. Because I don't get to do that a lot at all. But this is the one time <laughs> that I can. So it's nice. Have you gotten better at managing that, this, the, I don't want to say stress, but just the responsibility to continue? Like we had this conversation six months ago when you were all in and, and you were like, man, it's like to come up with these ideas on a weekly basis, like it takes its toll on you. Have you been able to build a system that like gets your brain moving, gets like the creativity going and has it like improved over time? Or do you still feel like it's a struggle? Like writer's block, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh dude, it's, I have absolutely, it, it, my life is chaotic. All right. There's no system in place, man. I can, usually I've noticed that my ideas come in threes or fours and there, there'll be weeks. There'll be weeks I'm like, oh, I can't, I, you know, because, man, I'll hit a big video, like the Ron Beer video, you know, with the, the lawnmower. Yeah. So that one was huge, you know, but and, and for a week, you're like, yes, man, that was awesome. But after a week, once you see the views going down and you see the follows going down, it's like, uh-oh, what next? What am I going to do next? So there's times, dude, there's weeks, one week, two weeks, three weeks where I'm like, you know, and then my brain will be like, all right, we got this, 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 and this. I'm like, oh. And then I'll do it. And then my brain's like, all right, I'm done for a while. And then it'll be another two, you know, two weeks or something like that. And, and then I pop something back up, but I've, I, I can't get a system down. It's not, it's just absolutely random. I've tried, you know, everything I do with my videos, I, I don't write anything, you know, it's all, uh -huh. it's all just right there. You know, I, I, I might write down a title, but I never write down a script. I just, uh, I just am like, okay, well, we'll do this and we cut and we'll do this and we cut and it just kind of comes along, you know, but no, there's absolutely no system. None, none at all. <laughs> uh, I love how, yeah, there's all these creators out there right now that are listening, taking notes and trying to think of like formulated things. But sometimes we've learned that like, I think consumers have gotten so much smarter in the past uh, as, as social media has blown up in the past five to 10 years that they see through so much of, of the BS and they just want real authentic, whether, whatever it is, like if they're buying from a brand or if they're consuming content from a comedian, like they, they get who's faking and who's not. And I think it's become really obvious. Um, and I think that you're very authentic in, in what you're creating as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I appreciate you. I don't, you know, I think y'all are the same way. There's, I mean, to me, there's so much fake in all of this that it's good to see people who deal with real life problems, man. Like in my story, if something happens, it's bad. I'm going to let you know about it because I mean, my life is not perfect, you know, but there's so many people here that want to portray that. They want to portray that they're, you know, they're on top, you know, and, and another thing that gets me is I see these people who have come from nothing, you know, and they get a little bit of a following and it changes them. It changes their attitude. You know, they, it's like they forgot who put them there. And then they all make a little bit of money and then they really become total a-holes. And I'm like, you know, it, it, without these people, you're, you're nobody, dude. You know, so, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know, man. I enjoy letting people see my life, you know, my real life. So I think yeah. it's worked out pretty well. Yeah. I want to stress real quick to listeners. Um, 
we've talked about this before internally, but there's a lot of like a lot of listeners that may not know um, the content world may look at you and then person B and person C who are all creating content and say, oh, they're all viral or all they're all they're you know, they're all doing this for a living. Your engagement numbers are truly unlike anything I've ever seen, uh, especially on Facebook. So Mm -hmm. I want to ask you that. And we've seen this before. Once you um, once something goes viral on social media and you're first of all, you hit all your followers. And then after that, it's pushing towards people who the algorithms pushing towards people who are similar to your followers. And then it keeps going and going. And you end up reaching these people who have no idea who you are, do not believe in any of the same things you do. They don't live in the same area, nothing. So I want to ask you um, that we can repeat on the podcast. What's the meanest thing that anyone's ever said to you? in a comment <laughs> oh man well <laughs> let me tell you uh okay so when i did that romper video oh yeah it got, it, it got on world star hip-hop oh man don't know if you've ever been on world star before uh <laughs> but i definitely don't belong on that website okay <laughs> so some of the things that were said about me they were absolutely hilarious okay but it was like you know if you was the type of person to get offended You'd cry, <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, I had, you know, it, I'm very fortunate because if somebody says something bad to me on a comment, dude, it's like an army of people just like, Oh, I'll kill, oh you know, and they yep. just jump on them. Like, I don't ever, I, I don't say anything back. Cause my fans are just, I mean, it's brutal, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I had one lady uh, message me. She didn't comment. She was just like, you know, you need to get a real job. You're sitting here making videos, being a loser. You know, your family needs a man with a real job. I'm like, lady, <laughs> like you don't, you don't understand, you know? And then I sent her a picture of me in the scrubs, you know, with my wife. And I'm like, I, I, this is what I've done, but this is what I do now to provide for my family. But as far as mean, you just go to world star hip hop. Okay. You, you, you search the romper video and you'll see a couple thousand <laughs> mean comments. I don't think Dale Jr. has been on a world star hip hop before. <laughs> no, 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 uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. no. I've been on there a couple of times though. It's very I, interesting. I remember whenever one of them went viral and I remember you posting, it was on world star and you were ticked off yeah. because like, if you're going to repost me, at least tag me. I can't stand whenever yeah. accounts don't even tag you. No, that is the, that's the worst thing in the world, especially for these big sites, man. And it's, it's gotten a little better since I've gotten bigger, but they do it from up and comers a lot. They'll steal their stuff and they use it on their pages. Like my guy I tour with Brandon Rainwater, y'all met him. Mm-hmm. Awesome. dude. He had a video that, that went viral and, and like DL Hughley and y'all, all these pieces, all these people stole it. They just stole it. They never gave him credit. They just stole it and put it on their pages, and they just do that for a numbers thing. They're like, oh, we'll just take it, and he'll think, oh, it's cool, you know, because I'm this person. But uh, it's not, man. We work hard to put that stuff out for some a-hole to just steal it, you know, and post it. And that's the thing. That's the thing about TikTok is if you post a TikTok, somebody's going to steal it, and they're going to put it on Facebook, and they're going to put it on YouTube. That's the one thing that I cannot stand about that app is people on TikTok get famous off of other people. You know, or, or they get a following because they just steal other people's content and post it. And I that, that I don't like that. You know, what's big on Twitter. I've noticed this before is someone will post a video of something or a, a meme or whatever, and they'll caption it. Who did this with like a crying, laughing face? Like, you know, who did it? You took it from their account and then you just reposted it and said, who did this? You know exactly who did it. That's it's in yep. that same world that you're talking about. It is, man. It's just, uh, I don't know. I think there should be something to stop it because, they I mean, people don't think this is work, dude. You know, they, they really don't. They look at us and they just think, oh, he's just, you know, he's just holding up the phone and doing a video. But the, And then they're just like, oh, I'll take it, you know, and I'll post it. They don't realize that they're still in something that you really have worked hard for. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. If you could collaborate with one person, uh, dead or alive, anyone in a video, who would it be? Well, since I already knocked Earl Dibbles off the list. <laughs> not uh, bragging or anything. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not bragging that I'm his only friend or anything. <laughs> I'm not doing that. All right. Uh, let's see. Man, I tell you, uh, anybody, anybody, anybody. I'd have to say I would love to meet and do something with Hank Williams Jr. 
I mean, that's just uh, the one guy that I just – which which is really what's cool is Hank Williams the third follows me. He actually emailed me. Oh, really? You know, and, yeah, and he's like, man, I'm a big fan. He's like, I've got a skit, you know, and he's like, man, if you want to use it, that's fine. And he emailed me this long email, and, and, and I'm like, man, that is so cool because, dude, I grew up on Hank Jr. You know, that's like – I mean, he's like a god, yeah. you know, and then his son – watches me and i'm like man that is just that's so cool but i think i think probably probably him or woody harrelson i like woody harrelson too that's a great one that's a great one have you ever thought about with how big some of these videos get and how like if you look at your reach on some of these videos have you ever thought of the different people that have probably like celebrities musicians like big people have probably seen these videos at one point or another yeah i mean i think obviously when you got something that's got 30 40 million views right you know it ain't no telling who sees it um and i, and I think that's really cool uh you know like i thought it was really cool that clay walker followed me on tiktok i was like wow clay walker you know and and i, I do admit tiktok's really cool about that because like theo vaughn follows me nice like, theo vaughn i'm like man that is just so cool you know to see uh to see that but uh yeah man i, I mean i think about it but at the same time it kind of sucks not to know who it is you know yeah. what i'm saying like Facebook, like just you never know who's watching. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's cool though. It is cool. I'd, I'd like for at least some of them to comment though, make me look cool. Yeah, Whatever. exactly. Dude, you and Theon <laughs> could get together and do some, or Theo, sorry, Theo Vaughn, y'all could get together and do some really cool stuff. I feel like the demographics and your fan base is really crossover. Yeah, yeah, de- definitely, man. I, I, I think that dude is, he just comes off as a really good guy. He just comes off as just like y'all. You know, it's just he seems like a really cool dude, uh, down to earth and everything else. But yeah, I, I got a feeling one day we'll cross paths because you know yeah. how it is. At, us guys in this circle, it's so crazy. You you end up talking somehow. You know, it's just like the same little circle of a bunch of country boys. You know, that have grinded their butts off and worked hard, and and you somehow end up intertwining and talking at some point. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned that you didn't have a specific goal to get into stand up when you first started, but now obviously that's such a big part of what you do. Was it hard to transition? Is there any correlation between content creation and stand up? What was that like? Dude, it's just different worlds. And you see a lot of content creators that think that they can do stand up. And what they'll do is they don't put the effort in. So they'll do these shows. Yeah, they'll sell tickets, but they'll come out and think that they can just do stuff that was in their videos or or I can just go out and just do whatever because they're going to like me and they bomb mm. and they might sell tickets for a few shows, but then it drops off and it kills them. Me, I'm not about to walk out on a stage and embarrass myself. I'm not going to. So I'm going to make sure that I'm good at it before I walk out on a stage. So, I, I you know, I mean, I've really worked hard at it. I want to be good at it. And it's one of those things where like this isn't this ain't about money. Yes. I'm providing for my family, but it's one of those things where I just want people to see me up there one day with Larry, the cable guy, Jeff Foxworthy, because if you look at it right now, dude, that's a wide open road. There's no young redneck comedian. that's there, you know, that you don't hear of any anymore. You've got Jeff Foxworthy, Larry, the cable guy, uh, Rodney Carrington, but there's nobody my age that is coming up. That's really doing what I'm doing right now. So yeah, I'm like, really like a Theo Vaughn is the only one that I can kind of even put in that category, but he's like, you're just like a different level. It's like a different kind of country. Yeah. 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 Louisiana, exactly. They're I mean, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, the, and me and Theo, our, our standup is definitely, uh, it's definitely different. And, and that's another thing, man. It's cool when people come to the shows and they expect more redneck comedy, they expect me to do more of a Jeff Fox where the Larry, the cable guy type of thing. But then, when I talk about what I'm talking about, it's more relatable to anybody, you know, because if you look out my crowd, man, it ain't just a bunch of white rednecks. You got black people, you got Hispanics. I mean, you've got, you know, a lot of women, a lot of men of, of just all different ethnicities out there. So it's doing exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted it to hit everybody, you know, just because I'm some fella out here in the bushes, uh, you know, doing these things. I don't want it to just be one demographic. My goal was to be able to let everybody you know, have a good time and watch. So it's working. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. Um, you, you've got a ton of dates coming up. I was just looking at your website, which is super awesome. Well, I guess if you want to be at home more, but okay. So, so far, 
where have you seen the rowdiest fans? Um, what area? Dude, I tell you, new, I, they, it, it's crazy. Um, the secondary markets, man, for me, I mean, almost – I'd say every show except for the ones with the restrictions, uh, you know, which I've done a few of and didn't realize that was the case when I got there. But they've sold out. I mean, they're, they've sold so well. That was like the other night we performed in front of right around 700 people in Morgantown, Virginia, at a theater. Ooh. And, yeah, I mean, it was it was beautiful. I mean, it might Earl Dibble's numbers, but it's pretty good, you know. But uh, I would have to say, man, Newton, North Carolina. Now, you've never probably even heard of Newton, North Carolina, okay? So I announced the sales for them tickets uh, in like five hours it sells out. It's like 500 seats. It sells out in five hours. Dude, I get up on stage, and it is they are just the most – they're, I wouldn't say wow. They just crunk. You know what I'm saying? Like any, just whenever you say something, they just, ah, and it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like I've never been on cocaine before, but I am sure that this is what it would feel like. <laughs> like it was just, man. It, it, and you know how it is. You feed off that, dude. I mean, when they are crunk, you're crunk. So uh, I'd have to say Newton, Morgantown was good. I mean, I've had so many good. I mean, I've, I've got really good fans and they are very supportive. And when I walk out on that stage and I hear just all that screaming and clapping, man, it's just, you know, it just gives you just a high. It's awesome. That's what's interesting with music, which is what we're used to with working with Granger, is that a lot of it <clears throat> revolves around uh, r the radio markets and different things like that. So a lot of a lot of musicians will tell you that this area of the country is really good for them. This area maybe doesn't have as many ticket sales. And that's not taking anything away from those fans there because usually they still show up and they're still rowdy and they still want to be there. But there's just not the sheer number of tickets sold. Whereas with content, you you know, you make a video and it's a level playing field. Like you're you're not you're not targeting a certain area of the country. That video can go viral to all over the country and it lends itself more towards being able to tour openly. I would think. Have you seen that? Oh, it does, man. oh yeah, dude. That's like, I mean, I have, I think, over a half a million fans in Australia. Uh, and what's so cool about it is if you look in my top 10 of my biggest fan bases, there's five cities in Australia in my top 10. Wow. There's five cities. I mean, you go Houston, Texas, and I think Brisbane, Australia are always tit for tat. They're always switching one and two, one and two. And then the United Kingdom, I've got like half a million fans over there. You know, I've got, I mean, I don't know how anybody in stand-up or, uh, you know, in, in something like this, entertainment, can sell tickets without the internet now. It's not that old, you know, used to it was old school grind. You you started in comedy clubs. You worked your butt off until you got noticed. But th these guys now, it's just not happening because these want to sell tickets. And the best and the fastest way to sell tickets is to say, well, this guy here has millions of fans on the internet. You know, and then they give you that shot and they say, all right, come on to our club. And then if you prove to them, then there you go. You've your foot's in and you're good to go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, man, because, I mean, there's no other way that me living in Union, South Carolina, I'd be able to sell tickets in California. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. So, uh, yes, the Internet has done. I mean, it, without it, I don't know how anybody succeeds now. So when are you touring Australia? I don't know yet. Uh, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm you here. have to with those numbers. Dude, not just that. I mean, just imagine me wearing some khaki jorts, you know, looking, you're looking like, oh, well, what's his name? Uh, Steve Irwin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you got to throw a Steve Irwin joke at, well, as long as it's tasteful. You got to throw a Steve Irwin joke. Yeah. I mean, dude, meet me with like a kangaroo or a koala bear. I mean, it's going to be awesome, but we're going to make it happen. I mean, there's too many people over there that continuously ask me to come over there for me not to come over there. We just got to wait for all this COVID stuff to finally die off so we can get over there. Well, I've always heard about overseas fans as well, and we'll, we'll have some Australian fans listening, so y'all comment if y'all have seen this as well. But if you're living in Australia and someone from America comes over, whether it's a comedian or musician or whatever, you know that there may not be another chance to see them ever five, 10 years, or sometimes ever, you know, so you're going to make sure that you're there whenever they come into town. I've always heard that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, and I hear that when, and when it comes to Australian crowds and fans, dude, they're, they're a different level. They're a different level. And apparently there's a lot of rednecks out there in Australia. So there are. it works out very well. Yeah, there are. Well, tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about, 
so you recently partnered with uh, Bunker Branding, correct? Yes. Yes. So well, we've got a lot of fans that listen to uh, Matt Carricker and Off the Ranch and Demo uh, Demolition Ranch and everything that he puts out, and he's just created an insane brand with his content. But tell me a bit, little bit about how that looks. Why you didn't want to do necessarily the merch anymore? Because you are a content creator who also sells merch, whereas we we sometimes talk about how we're a merch company who also does content. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's different. It's yeah. a little bit different. But you see, Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it is. But man, y'all, y'all worked to get to that point. Y'all never meant for that to be like that. But that stuff took off. And I mean, I wear my Yee shirts everywhere, dude. I mean, I wear them shirts everywhere on tour. I mean, if I'm packing three shirts, just a Yee tank top, the Yee camo short sleeve. Uh, yeah, I got like, it, 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 there's going to be three or four Yee shirts in there. Okay. But yeah, man, I just, I, Bunker Brand and I, I cannot remember who it was that told me about it, but I look on there and I'm like, well, you know, Whistling Diesel's on there. Uh, Demolition Ratch, who owns that? What's his name, Matt? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Matt? You know, he's on there. Um, and I just see a lot of people that I'm like, well, if they trust these guys and I see what they've built, then I can, I, I can trust these guys. So I applied and man, they've just been, dude, they've been the most awesome people to work with. I mean, they're right there. You know, when I have a new video come out, if there's something I want to put on a shirt, I'm like, hey, can we do this limited time, man? They're on it. And with my merch stuff that I take, man, I can say, hey, I want this many shirts. They mail it to me. They just, they, it makes my life a lot easier, you know, because I just, I, I manage myself. I don't have a manager. This is me. I'm doing it all. And I've gotten, I, I've just gotten overwhelmed. So I needed help. And they seem to be the best ones to help me. And of course, maybe one day I'd love to sell as much as Yee Yee apparel, uh, you know, um, my truck gang stuff does very well, you know, cause I never realized how big that would be. Um, and then of course I got me a God bless thick chick shirt. And I mean, who don't want one of them? You know what I'm saying? The shirt but or a thick chick? I got both. <laughs> I got both. And I got a tattoo that says God bless thick chicks. I don't know if you've seen that. With a thick chick <laughs> laying right there in the middle. I see it. But, yeah, man. I mean, y'all, you know, I, I really respect what y'all have done. Um, and it's just cool that it really kind of happened. I don't know if you want to say by accident, y'all just kind of yee yee and then bam, it just blew up. It, uh, with, with, I know it's been hard work over time, but now to see what y'all are doing, man, it's awesome to see that. So I'm hoping that at some point in time, my merch will get up there with y'all's. We need to do a collab. Yeah, we talked about that, but then somebody just keeps, keep, <clears throat> somebody keeps holding it. it. Ain't me. I mean, I don't know who it could be. Well, Not the two me, guys so in Probably this guy right here. Hey, yeah, who's over to merch? Get him on the camera right now. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have to do that. If if you're listening to the podcast right now and you want to see a collab, just comment below. And then once we have a bunch of comments, you will be able to say, here, look, we have to do it. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? How about do that so you can remind these two? Because we ain't been talking about it for like a year. So, <laughs> I mean. Uh, okay, I got to ask you about your son. Dale Jr. Jr. So I know, obviously, the name comes from Dale Dale and Dale Jr., but when did that start? And I'm guessing you did that because, you, you know, you don't want your son's name just out there. But I just think it's so funny that his name is literally Dale Jr. Jr., and I'm guessing he's famous in his own right now. Hey, dude, he is. I, I mean, when we're out where people will look at me, and they're, if they're not sure, they'll look at him, and they're like, that's him. And then they recognize me by either him or by my wife. But it's a lot of times it seems like, oh, I knew who you were because of Dale Jr. Jr. You know, and man, I was I was out on the back porch one day and he was out there and he was doing his thing. And I just looked over there and I said something, uh, you know, about my boy Dale Jr. Jr. And I was like, that's it, man. Like, that's his name. And, and when he hears it, if he's walking somewhere and he hears Dale Jr. Jr., he's like, He's looking, man, because that's him. He knows that's him. You know, so, uh, yeah, I, it was more, but it was so funny, dude, because I have so many people walk up to me, but, hey, me and my wife is betting, all right? And I want to see his birth certificate because we got a bet on this, and I want to see if that's his name. <laughs> so, yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's gotten a little out of hand, but it's cool, man. You know, it's cool because, uh, I mean, it works so well with who I am, you know, with the racing and all that stuff and everything yeah. else. It just – uh. It works very well. He loves it. He loves it. He, he feeds off of it. So it's cool. Does he have a Halloween costume picked out? 
Uh, well, he went to school today as a as a firefighter. Um, okay. Yeah, he went to school today as a firefighter. Uh, that's what he wanted to be. So I I got him a dirt. He's about, basically a real firefighting outfit on. You know, I we we got Podunk Fire Department on the back of it. Got his name on there. And he's kind of ticked off because he didn't get to re- get to carry like a real hatchet to school today. I was like, son, we, you can't. I was it's like, 2021. I mean, we be- yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. You walk in there with a hatchet, that's going to be expulsion. I can't homeschool you, obviously. So we got to stay away from that. So he wasn't too happy with that. But uh, yeah, he's a firefighter. Do any kids at school call him Dale Jr. Jr.? No, dude. But man, when I pull up in that school line to get him, they're like, oh, that's your daddy. I watch him on the YouTube. I see y'all on the YouTube. I see y'all on the TikTok. So he's kind of like, you know, he he likes it, but then sometimes he's like, oh, it's just my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's just like, it's just my daddy. You know, and, uh, you know, he just gets in the truck, and it's a normal day for him. But, you know, he, he just – he sees all of them like, oh, Ginger Billy, Ginger Billy, Ginger Billy, and stuff like that. But he's every, every adult calls him Dale Jr. Jr in town i mean every adult that's what he's called dale jr jr that's his name he knows it so that's he 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 loves it granger's daughter london has started her own youtube channel since being on the smith's family vlog with granger has dale jr jr asked for his own accounts or anything yet no he has not he he'll get a wild hair every now and again and want to do videos but i mean he 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 sees me filming and he sees that he just wants time with me you know, he he would rather be out there in the yard with me playing and stuff like that uh, than really filming because he just wants time with his daddy. And, and I don't want to push it on him, you know, because uh, I'd rather me and him spend time. So we ride and stuff like that. If he asked to do one, I'm like, all right, let's do it, you know. Um, but if not, man, you know, I don't I don't try to force it on him or nothing like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Question Question for you. Your Mount Rushmore of all-time rednecks. Four people. Who's on it? All-time rednecks. Okay. Earl Dibbles. Okay. Catfish Cooley. Okay. Uh, I think. Up Church. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, and who's you, next? Your beard who's would look man? pretty good in stone. Yeah, it would. It would. I just don't think you could get this in stone too good. <laughs> I mean, it, nah. I don't um, think stone gets that red. Say, yeah, I'm going to say uh, Rodney Carrington. Oh, that's a good I one. Love, yeah. I love Rodney Carrington, man. I really think he's awesome. So I'd ask the four I'd have to say. That's a good one. That's a good one. I always love uh, asking that question. We always get different answers. So it's kind of funny yeah. to hear. Yeah, that's my, them's my, them's my four right there. Is there four in the Mount Rushmore or is there five? There's four, ain't there? I think there's four. I was hoping you would know. We're going to pretend it's four. Okay, it's four. It's four. All right, <laughs> I, got, I got three questions from Google to end us. And this is not; these are not my questions. These are questions that people are asking on the internet. Is Ginger Billy a doctor? Ginger Billy is a respiratory therapist. Yeah, no, not a doctor. You don't want me doing that. Mm-mm, you don't want me putting orders in for stuff like that. No, I'm a respiratory therapist. I do save lives, okay? I've saved many a life. I ain't bragging or nothing. You know, but I, I've saved you know, no doctor. I couldn't go to school for eight years, dude. I went to tech school for two. That was all I had. That was it. After that, I was like, no more for this guy. That's good. How does Ginger Billy really talk? <clears throat> I talk like this. I'm Whoa. A, I'm a very punctual young man. Sometimes I like to eat 10 strumpets. Mm-hmm. I like how you just turned British all of a sudden. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, let's see. How, how... Dang, I used to have an Australian accent, but now I'm going to get it confused with a British accent. So, never mind. We ain't going to do that one. But yeah, man. I mean, I, I talk like I talk. Australia is the one that sounds British, but way cooler. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here we have the Komodo dragon. Something like go. that. I think. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Uh, last question. How much money does Ginger Billy make? Well, I mean, enough to decorate this double wide. Uh, really thank you. Okay. I got a Halloween decoration out there in the yard if it tells you anything. All right. Yeah. Make that big money, baby. Make that big money. That's always now, one had, of my favorite ones. Everyone, dude, I had everyone somebody, always wants to know. I had somebody message me and say, hey, man, is that double wide a prop? 
I'm like, that is my house. All right. That is my home. <laughs> like, why would that be my pop? This is my house, man. You like know, I live here. yeah. Like this is where I live. All right. But I'm going to tell you the funniest one I see on Google is if you search ginger Billy, it says ginger Billy is five foot six. Whoa. That makes me want to fight somebody. Okay, okay. So what are you? Cause I ain't, I ain't vertically challenged, but I'm not five foot six. All right. I'm five nine. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who wrote that, but I'm going to fight somebody. I like that that's the one that pisses you off more than anything. Yeah, dude, because it shows people walk up to me. Now, I'm barefoot. It shows they're like, man, you are. You, I didn't realize how short you was. You know what that does to a man's self-esteem? <laughs> that's why you need to go You need to go from barefoot to, like, boots. You can get those extra three inches back. I'm going to get them boots that's got them stilts on them for people. You know what I'm talking about? You see the guys that's got one leg shorter than the other, so they wear that boot with the rig thing on it. I'm going to yeah. get me some of them, wear them on stage. You can look like SpongeBob whenever he wore the uh, really high boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. Last question, where can people find you if they want to follow you on uh, on social media? You can find me all over the internet. I'm on TikTok, GingerBilly1. I'm on Facebook, GingerBilly. YouTube, GingerBilly. And Instagram, Comedian GingerBilly. Or you just Google me. All that stuff comes up. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. I ain't on Twitter, though. Don't look for me on Twitter. Okay. I actually did look for you on Twitter because I was thinking you may have some, like, problematic tweets that I could make fun of you for, but there was nothing. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I don't need to be on Twitter. <laughs> Horrible idea. Mm-mm. And if someone wants to see you uh, at a show, because there, you have shows coming up all over the country, you're, you're, you're going to be nearby most people. So where can they find that? Gingerbillycomedy.com. You look on there, it's got all my shows. Uh, everywhere and I will probably be in a town near you very soon so come check me out we'll have a good time perfect perfect well thank you so much brother we really appreciate you taking the time oh man thank y'all and it's always good seeing y'all man always awesome we'll see you soon all right Bo. thank you so much for listening to that interview with ginger billy let us know comment below if you think we should do a shirt together because we're talking about it I know we talked about it in the podcast we're discussing what that would look like and tell us what the design should look like. You got any ideas? No, this is what we need to unite yeah, for. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. Well, thank you for listening. We've got a very special guest next week. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And we'll see you next week. See you guys. Eat your veggies. Bye.